Hey, what's going on guys? Mackenzie Long here. So today we're gonna to be talking about the video from 60 Minutes. It's a little bit older one. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but it has to do with the 401k fallout. And I think this is pretty important. I think we're gonna start seeing a lot more of these as well. And I think it's really important to understand what people have gotten themselves into and some of the things that have happened. If you haven't watched my previous video about the pensions, it was a frontline reaction that I did. You can find that on my YouTube to kind of figure out how we got to this point. Uh, this video is kind of be maybe part two of that, even though they're two different related videos. This is gonna be talking more specifically about the 401k, whereas that talked about pensions and kind of how we got into the 401k. So if you wanna learn more about that, make sure you check out that video. But in this one specifically, we're going to be doing a reaction to the 401k and some of the things that are happening. Now, I believe this video was actually made in about 2009, but I think the reason why this is important to look at now is I think you're going to see this happen all over again. Let's get into the video. The effects of the current economic crisis have touched everyone. Even if you still have a good job and a paid up mortgage, chances are your monthly 401k statement will remind you that you've lost a good chunk of your savings. Trillions of dollars have evaporated from those accounts that have become the prime source of retirement funds for a majority of American workers, affecting their psyche and their future. If you're still young enough, there's time to rebuild and recover. But if you're in your 50s or 60s or beyond, the consequences can be dire. And it's drawing attention to the shortcomings of a retirement system that's jeopardized the financial security of tens of millions of people. It was a gray, chilly morning in midtown Manhattan, and a line of unemployed, mostly white-collar workers stretched for blocks around the Radisson Hotel. More than a thousand middle managers, stockbrokers, consultants, secretaries, and receptionists had come here hoping to find a job. If you are just arriving, please step this way. It was called a career fair, but there was no merriment here, only a whiff of desperation. Do you uh, have any openings in the IT industry? Many of these people had been out of work for months and burned through their liquid assets, their future even bleaker than the present. Alan Weir, who turned 60 this month, showed us his latest 401k statement, which he hadn't had the courage to open up. I'm afraid. You're going to open it now? You want me to? Let's do it. There's good reason for his trepidation. Nearly half of his life savings have vanished in a matter of months. It went down again. How much are you down overall? Oh, uh, about $140,000. Do you think you'll ever get it back? I, mean, I would probably never see it come back. I was looking to retire probably when I hit 62. I can't do it now. I'll probably be working until I'm at least 70. I'm a Microsoft Office diva. Until she lost her job, Kathleen Coleman had spent nearly 30 years working as an executive assistant on Wall Street. She doesn't have much to show for. Tell me about your 401k. Um, does this answer the question? This is uh, what it was in 2005, 2007. You're down below 2005. Right. And another one went down almost forty thousand dollars. One right. was eighty, eighty-eight thousand, and then and then it went down to like fifty. Yeah, that's that's tough to watch. And I've heard this story thousands of times. And this is nothing new, obviously, in my industry, but maybe for you it's something that you feel is new, but most people are in this situation. So if you're one of those I think this is really important to kind of pay attention to and to figure out what to do next. And I think maybe if you're watching this video a few months after I've made this or a few months from now, I think we're going to see this whole cycle happen over again. And it might not be this year, probably be in the next couple of years, but we're going to go through the same exact thing. And the hard part that I, that I have at, at grasping some of this is that it doesn't have to be this way doesn't have to be this way, but, but people continue to repeat this over and over again. And I think a large portion of it is because they've had all of these responsibilities put on them that now they have to become financial professionals to figure out how to save this money in their 401k because we don't give them any instructions. We just say, here, pick out some stuff, talk to your HR manager who's not a financial professional and can't answer any of your questions, but good luck in preparing for retirement and you can select out of these funds and I hope that you make it. 
And that's kind of what we expect people to do and, and to overcome to be able to reach their retirement goals. It's crazy to me. How old are you? 54 and I live alone. I don't have any children. I've been a career girl all my life. And it's, uh, it's been a great career and I don't deserve this. I'm sorry. It's all right. Have you had any nibbles? All the nibbles I've had, I get beat out by top models who can type. And, and, and it's, I have experience and dedication and loyalty and I can make any boss shine. I can, if you're out there, I'll relocate anywhere for you. Um, I mean, obviously you can hear this woman's desperation. I wasn't, um, I, I gotta stop it here because I mean, it's brave to do this and to talk about these things, it's not easy. And, and I've seen a whole repeat of this as well coming out of the pandemic and that there are very qualified people who are used to making good money, but now the challenge is these companies, it's so easy for them to hire two or three people at the cost of what they would have to at a higher level executive. And this is why, on a side note to get outside of the 401k, I think this is why people need to figure out how to make money outside of just their job. Because you have security if you can make money outside of that. And if we're still depending on our job to take care of all these things. And here's the challenge, it's kind of an adverse effect in that the more money that you make at your, at your job, at least from what I'm seeing and what I've seen over the last few years, is the higher risk that you have of being let go and the chances of finding that good paying job are very, very minimal. And the challenge with that is because we've had this large population of older people who have lots of experience, but the challenge is there are so many younger people that are coming in behind them that they can replace those jobs. And yes, they have less experience, but we can get two or three of them at the cost of one. So the challenge being is it's not even that people have lost money, it's now they can't even and find a job to recoup the money that they had at the amount of money that they were used to making. And this becomes a huge problem that affects more than just their retirement, it affects every aspect of their life. Um, psychologically, what does this piece of paper do to you? Oh, it, it, uh, it crushes any, any rest I may get when I'm 65. I'll have to work for the rest of my life. The saddest part of this story is that it's being repeated all over the country. In eastern Pennsylvania, 59-year-old Iris Hans lost her accounting job and half of her 401k investments. She's now back in the workforce as a part-time cashier in a grocery store. Your debit card. You have a great day. In Dearborn, Michigan, Terry and Donna McNally are barely holding on. He lost his sales job in August. The condo they bought 15 years ago is worth less than their mortgage, and 40% of his 401k retirement savings is gone. Yeah, so see, so you can see the compounding effect of this, that if people don't have a safe, secure way to save money, and they do, but they don't know about it. So if you could put part of that away into something that's safer, then at least you have some funds to be able to access because what generally happens to people is all of these things hit at the same time and it's even worse a lot of times i've been working with people who have everything in their job so they have their job and then they have their 401k through their job and then their stock options through the job and then what happens is something like this and when that drops and the economy drops, they lose all three of them at the same time. And that's exactly what you're hearing here. They said his condo is worth less. He no longer has his job and his 401k is at half of what it used to be. And so that's a triple hit at the same time. The, and then what happens is people usually rob their 401k to be able to cover their bills. And it's not their fault. It's because they have to. And this is just poor planning, but it's not entirely people's fault because they just don't know. They're not financially educated. So this is common of what's happening. And I think we're going to see even more of this over the next couple of years. Is the main provider now. Let me hear you count to 10. Can you count to 10? One, two, Running a daycare center out of their home. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Are you here for Joan? Yes. Terry considers himself fortunate to have found part-time work greeting the bereaved at a funeral home and making lattes at Starbucks. There you go. Where colleagues young enough to be his grandchildren have taken him under their wing. What's the hardest part? I'm no longer sitting in a computer or driving in a car to a call. You know, suddenly I'm standing for four to six hours and greeting people or making drinks or trying to learn the process and the food business thing, which is very difficult. It's tough, but I'm proud of him. 
at his age to be doing what he's doing. Oh my gosh, just recently getting married and thinking about some of this stuff, like you have no idea what that kind of means and how important this is. And this, I think is pretty unusual because I can't tell you how many times I've seen that couples actually split over these kinds of things that they lose everything and the only thing they can think to do is to go out on their own. And so they're adding an even bigger financial burden on top of it uh, because the challenges of one of them not being able to find a job or get back to the work that they were used to. Um, but her saying that, that really touched my heart. This lady is a saint. She, she, regardless of whether she believed it or not, the fact that she said, I would love to know if these people are still together or not, because um, that's pretty powerful right there. So women, husbands, if you're looking at this and this is something that you're going through, I just want to make an important little side note here. If you guys stick together and you can find a way to get through this without getting upset with each other, and I know that's really hard to do, uh, and it, oftentimes it because it's because there's no plan in place. And, that, and what I mean by that is I've worked with hundreds of couples, if not thousands of couples at this point, and they never, and they very rarely ever have a plan in place. And what I mean by that is they don't know where they're going together. And the challenge is if you don't know where you're going together, you both, and when shit hits the fan, excuse me, <clears throat> when crap hits the fan, excuse me for my French, but when crap happens, they end up dividing because they don't know what the game plan is. And the reason why it's so important to have that in place is they know where to go. It's let's just get, on this on track together faster. But if they don't have anything like that, they don't have a financial plan, they don't have a life plan together, they don't know what to do, and they both go into reactive mode, and it generally drives them apart. And you'll see a lot of divorces actually happen because of money, because of things just like this. The 401k drop uh, was tremendous, uh, is tremendous at this point in time, and that's where the savings was. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's, that's our hurt right now. We can't live our vision of our dream of retirement. That's the worst part. Many people can't. And what was your dream? Our dream was to have a log cabin up north, Leland area, and just live a nice, quiet life. And we can't do that. You think you'll ever be able to retire? I don't no. see that day. I can no longer see that day. Yeah, that's, that's tough. And, uh... I've had to have this conversation many a times and it's not easy to do. And the challenge is usually by the time that somebody's willing to sit down and talk about these things, it looks like this. And the reason for that is because when the market's doing well, crypto's going crazy, NFTs are going crazy, you're making money on Pokemon cards, nobody wants to talk to a financial professional because a financial professional is gonna talk about doom and gloom and prepare for the future and make sure you're not going crazy on this stuff. And the challenge with that is they're going to ask you to not get as good a rate of returns in lieu of being able to make sure that these assets are protected and that can we get, we're looking for stable growth, we're looking for some safety, not just all out, put it all on black. And people don't like hearing that, people don't. And when they're doing well, they don't want to hear that and they don't feel that they need to hear that. And so then all of this goes into one plan. You heard this guy say, well, this is where all of our savings was. We didn't have anything else outside of the 401k, Obviously, they were fairly risky in that, and this gentleman's getting older. He never looked at rebalancing his portfolio. So this is a huge challenge for a lot of people. And this is something that I see all of the time. What kind of a retirement plan allows millions of people to lose 30 to 50% of their life savings just as they near retirement? David Ray, president of the profit-sharing 401k Council of America and a lobbyist for the 401k industry, says it's one that empowers people to make their own investment decisions. 401k is the absolute best way people can save for retirement. They absolutely are the best retirement vehicle we have. How can you say it's the best available if it has let down tens of millions of people at the time they need the money the most? That's not a 401k problem. That is our entire investment system. This is about the markets went down for everybody. Nobody was saved in the current uh, in the current thunderstorm. He he has a point there. Okay, you don't blame the tool for a job not being done well, right? Like if I, I I'm just a car guy, I'm an engineer, right? So if I try to do a paint job and I'm using a hammer, 
chances are it's not gonna come out very well, right? Like, that's pretty easy to understand. And we wouldn't blame the hammer in that situation. We would blame the person who's using the hammer because tools are good if they're used properly. But where that becomes a challenge is we're handing people a loaded gun, their re the retirement, their savings, their planning into the future, and we're saying, good luck with it. And we give them no training. They have no one to go to to talk about it because their HR person is not licensed, isn't allowed to talk to them about it. If they go to a financial advisor who is not actually on that 401k, they're not allowed to tell them what to do because they don't manage it. So they get almost no help whatsoever. They get a stack in a portfolio and they're supposed to understand how to read it. And really all it is is talking about previous performance and previous performance has nothing to do with future performance. So how are they supposed to navigate that? We would never take a loaded gun, put it in a five-year-old's hand and say, good luck. But that's what we do in America with our retirement programs, especially now that people are responsible for taking care of all of these things by themselves. He says that many people still have more money in their 401ks than they've actually contributed. He says everyone had multiple investment options, including low yield guaranteed returns. And he believes people who lost money have no one to blame but themselves. In America, uh, you know, it's a, it's a society based on freedom and choice and personal responsibility. We need to help them understand these responsibilities and execute them to the best they can. 401k is part of that. There are no guarantees. What about the people who are 63 or 64? A lot of those people were thinking about retiring. Well, and now they aren't. Well, I mean, there are a lot of more retired and have to go back into the workforce. Well, but that was not a 401k problem. That's an investment system problem. The markets go up and down. And if those people chose, to take equity risk, there was there was a, a logical outcome. Okay, I, I don't like the way he said logical outcome. That's not fair. That's like saying putting money in your 401k, you're obviously always going to lose money. And I don't think that's fair, but basically exactly what he said here was, well, they chose to put that money into an equity portfolio, so it's their responsibility, which is entirely true. And as far as the law goes, that's absolutely accurate. Now, the challenge is we don't actually educate anybody on how to do that. So my example of the loaded gun is exactly what he's saying. Well, they chose to do that. Well, yeah, the five-year-old chose to play with the gun, but whose responsibility is it to make sure they're educated? Now we can say it's the five-year-old's responsibility, right? Because obviously these people are adults. It should be their responsibility. They should be staying up late at night, figuring out what's going on with their 401k so that they can properly retire and, and do their planning. And I just don't know if that holds weight, but that's the current system that we have. So is a 401k a great plan? I mean, it's a tool. It can be great, it depends on a lot of different factors, um, but it is probably one of the better tools that we have options for. The challenge is there's no education. But in fact, the 401k plans that have become the primary source of retirement income for 60 million Americans were never designed to be retirement plans in the first place. They were created in the late 1970s as a savings plan and tax shelter for ordinary Americans. The idea was that workers would make voluntary contributions and employers would match a portion of them. The taxes would be deferred until the employee reached the age of 59 and a half. It was supposed to supplement the two traditional income streams for retirees, social security and pensions, one leg of a three-legged stool that would support American workers into their golden years. But it didn't turn out that way. Yeah, he's totally accurate. So what he's saying is that it was supposed to be a three-part tool, right? It was supposed to be used in conjunction with two other things. And so there was the 401k that you were doing your own savings with. There was the pension, which you were doing a forced savings through your company, that it was then going to pay you or guarantee you a portion of your income, maybe 50 or 70%. The Obviously, the other portion of that, which you could put into your 401k, was supposed to take part of that. And then also Social Security. Now the challenge with that is what's happening to all of these legs on the stool. And that's probably what we're gonna get into next. I'd like to hear a little bit more about it before I give my opinion. A three-legged stool, if you will, uh, has gone to two legs and it's wobbly, uh, and it's wobbling. And I'm not sure that it's gonna support anything. And that's, that's the scary part and people are afraid. Brooks Hamilton has helped design retirement plans for some of the country's largest corporations. He says 401ks turned out to be so much cheaper than funding pensions that many companies decided to freeze their pension plans and replace them with 401ks. 
The decision created millions of new employee investors for Wall Street and the financial community, and they pounced on the opportunity. If you go back and track uh, the mutual fund growth in assets, and you track the growth in 401k plans, it looks like a railroad track leading to the sky. Uh, they are parallel tracks. So the big beneficiaries were the mutual funds. That's right. That's correct. When employers began turning 401ks into retirement plans, the financial community was not shy about promoting them as such. The prospect of trillions of dollars in the hands of unsophisticated investors opened the door for all sorts of potential abuses. So he's kind of reiterating what we were talking about, and I, and I totally agree with that, right? Like the great thing about the 401k or the idea of the 401k is it gave every person a chance to be able to invest into the stock market and it gave them the ability to take their retirement planning into their own hands and this is a great thing coming from back in the day where we didn't really have a lot of options as far as our pension goes we didn't really have any say about any of that we just assumed and if you watch my other video about pensions you can watch that as well it's by frontline go check out that video too to find out what happened with them but then and you'll hear in that multiple times they say well i just kind of set it and forget it i i thought they were taking care of it and so I thought everything was going to be okay because it was in their hands all I was responsible for was putting money into that account and they were to take care of everything else and and the challenge with that is the financial institutions got their money out of it the government got their money out of it there are so many fees in there because the company's making money off it they have more responsibility they have more obligations so you're putting more people into the pie it's kind of like the difference between eating a lemon and eating something that's been processed 50 times and now is a candy right like yes it was once one thing but it's changed so much the quality of it is diluted is so much because so many people have their hands in their pie and that's the same thing that's kind of happening with the 401ks now it has gotten better since the time of this video but that's the challenge with what happening so again it's a tool and there's always good things about a tool and there's always bad things about a tool so we'll probably get into some of the bad things about it right now the fact is that the typical 401k investor is a financial novice they don't know a stock from a bond and we give them a list of 20 or 30 mutual funds with really really powerful names you know they sound like gee that's where I want to have my money what are the generally the quality of the mutual funds and 401k plans Mediocre. I'll be real honest with you. With half the funds on the list, really dogs, what people would characterize as dogs, shouldn't be on the list to start with. There clearly has been a raid on these funds by the people of Wall Street, and it's cost the savers and, and the future retirees a lot of money that would otherwise be in their account, independent of the financial collapse. Representative George Miller of California is chairman of the House Committee on Education and Labor and a staunch critic of the 401k industry especially its practice of deducting more than a dozen undisclosed fees from its clients 401k account so yeah exactly kind of what we were talking about so uh the challenge with it a lot of times is people don't know what they're actually being charged for things and it's kind of twofold having been in the industry as long as i have i don't want to say people don't care but they don't care to know either uh, it's kind of like we don't care to know what gasoline is made out of. We just want to put it in our car and we expect it to function. And that's really how people kind of treat their retirement planning and the vehicles that they're putting money into is they just think that if they put it in there, it's just going to handle itself. And unfortunately, that's just not reality. It takes time. It takes effort. And especially when we're talking to about large amounts of money over time, it does make a big difference. And there's obviously a lot of hands in the pie once it gets into a 401k because there's more people who have to manage it. There's more paperwork, there's more regulation, all kinds of stuff which adds to the cost. Now, this has gotten better over time, but the challenge is mostly that a lot of these things are not disclosed and what are we getting? I guess the real question people have is, what are we getting for this money that we're paying for? And that's the real question. Now you've got a bunch of economic wizards jumping in and taking money out of your retirement plan and they don't want to tell you how much. You can't decipher it in simple English and they're not interested in disclosing it or having any transparency about it. And most of the people that look at their 401ks have no idea that these fees are being taken out. No. Where would you find it? Where would you find these fees in this prospectus? You can look on any page you want. And when you're all done reading, and you will find some of the fees and the commissions here, but you won't find them all, and I bet you won't find half of them. 
There are legal fees, trustee fees, transactional fees, stewardship fees, bookkeeping fees, finders fees, and the list goes on and on. Miller's committee has heard testimony that they can eat up half the income in some 401k plans over a 30-year span, but he has not been able to stop it. We tried to just put in some disclosure and transparency in these fees, and we felt the full fury of that financial lobby. Yeah, and, and obviously that's a big challenge. And there has been more visibility on these things over the years. But again, there are lots of fees in these things. And if people don't know about it, I don't think people are upset about fees necessarily. They're just upset that they don't know what they are. They don't know what they're getting for it. And it's not even clearly displayed in what they're being shown. And I think that lack of transparency makes a big difference for me. Just like anything else, we just want to know what's going on and be able to justify why we're paying for things. And I think that's a perfectly fair assumption to make or a perfectly fair question to ask and to be able to have brought to light for people to be able to know those things. David Ray, a lobbyist for the 401k industry, says he favors disclosing the fees, but his partners in the financial industry don't. You think most people know these fees exist? I think they know that there are fees. They don't know exactly how large they are. Why do you think the financial services industry is opposed to fee transparency? So obviously those fines could be massive and to make a small change means the potential for huge fines into the future. And a lot of times those fines don't come out till years or decades later when they found out that they haven't done something right. And it could be as simple as an accounting error that cost them millions or billions of dollars, which now hurts the portfolio and everything else that they're managing. And so uh, the regulation on these things is very high. So you can also understand why they don't want to change a lot of that. And not all of it, part of it, but not all of it is simply because they don't want to be transparent. I wanted to ask David Ray, who's been so bullish on 401k plans, one last question about what the future holds for people like Terry and Donna McNally and Kathleen Coleman, who you met at the beginning of the story. Dedicated, loyal, I can be there. There's nothing standing in my way. Thank you. You need a babysitter? <laughs> Most of the people that we've talked to are 50 mm -hmm. and 60 years old right. and have sustained these losses say right. there is no way they're ever going to make them back. Right. Do you agree with that? I, I think we have to be truth tellers. Um, I think that uh, when, a, when a person has hit this point and we've had this unfortunate situation, uh, I don't think we can misrepresent what the possibilities are. And the reality is that money is not coming back that they've lost. They can't count on it. They have to, they, it, it may, maybe they have long, maybe if they work 10 more years, it'll come back by the, but it's important that they not have unrealistic expectations. The challenge with that is how come we don't have ways to be able to educate people or allow them to know what's going on financially to make better decisions. And this comes into a whole nother realm of questions and uh, stipulations and who should help and how should they help and what regulations and what qualifications should they have and all of these other things that kind of come behind that. But I think the biggest challenge is people simply don't know or they don't understand what they're getting involved in with a 401k. And of course they get a prospectus and we assume that they would read that 50 or 100 page prospectus of words that they've never even heard before or used before and expect them to understand it. And I think that that in and of itself is pretty detrimental. So this is really why it's important to pay attention to these things. So if you haven't been paying attention, it doesn't mean you need to spend a lot of time on it. it doesn't I don't mean hours every single day or every single week, but you can look at these things monthly. You can look at them quarterly or annually or talk to a professional, at least kind of get an idea of where you're going and what you want to do. And especially if you're getting into this age group of 50s and 60s, there are ways that you can protect a lot of these assets and still have upside potential. Obviously, you're not going to get as much upside potential because you're going to want to protect it. You're more worried about protecting it at some point than you are necessarily getting great rates of return. And the challenge is most people don't rebalance those things as they get closer to retirement. So they end up like people in this video where they lose 40, 50, $140,000 of their retirement. And that's on the low end. I've seen, I've seen into the high six figures that they've lost simply because they didn't really understand what they were doing and they weren't prepared 
if it looked like anything other than upmarket. And this is one of the big challenge I see with the financial industry. When they look at projections, they say, well, just put it into a mutual fund. And then that way you can guarantee basically a 9% rate of return, which is absolutely false. And if anybody tells you that that's not accurate, but needing to be able to prepare for things like this is important. Well, I remember sitting down with a guy, it was a client that I was working with. And I remember him turning to her and saying, well, if the stock market goes down, this is right before everything kind of crashed with the pandemic. And he said, well, if the stock market goes down, she'll just have to work another 10 years. And that's literally their focus. And that's what they say to people is if everything falls out, if the bottom falls out, just work another 10 years, no big deal. But that's not necessary. People don't need to do that. There are other options if they're willing to look for them. And I'm not gonna say what that is. Obviously, I don't know you, I don't know what you're looking for. And so that would be a blanket statement. I obviously wouldn't do that, but that's something you should be talking to your financial professional about is how do I protect some of these assets as I get closer into my retirement years. And I hope this was helpful for you. Don't forget to hit the like button and also comment. I would love to hear some of your comments and some of the things that you've been able to maybe work on or things that have affected you or what you've done through these situations. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well. I hope these things are helpful for you and I love to do more of these. If you have other financial videos or mindset videos that you'd like for me to watch and maybe do a review on, send them my way and I would love to hear about that as well. Maybe we'll do some more of those and I will catch you guys later. Bye.